Hi there! My name is Kaylin Leahy, and today I'm going to be talking a little bit about my piece, Everything on Earth is in a State of Constant Flux, the Role of Imagination in Society in Pursuing Lasting Happiness. I had originally written this essay last semester for my first year writing seminar, uh, which was very philosophical, and essentially we had to figure out what it means to live an examined life. And personally, I loved the class. The discussions were very upbeat and interesting, and the material was super diverse. We read poetry, essays, plays, books, everything. So as a result, we had to do very in-depth analysis. And before, before now, or before this time, I had always picked topics for papers that we had discussed in class. Um, All throughout high school, I would always pick a theme that I kind of already had direction um, on just based on the discussions in class. So because the discussions and analysis was so in-depth in this first year writing seminar, I really became more confident as a writer because I was able to pick something that we didn't talk about in class and I still felt confident enough in um, my skills as a close reader to be able to pick something a little bit offbeat and interesting and put my own interpretation um, to it. So um, the thing that I ended up choosing to write about was uh, the imagination in Rousseau's Reveries of the Solitary Walker. And essentially there is this one passage where he really delves deep into the imagination uh, as being in a state of constant flux and how this constant flux can lead to a lasting happiness if we don't let the ebbs and flows, um, being the positive and negative um, moments caused by the imagination, if we don't let that take over and we can get to a baseline flux um, of the imagination, that's what lasting happiness really is. So I took that passage and um, I knew it was interesting. I knew it was something I want to talk about. And I took the advice that Professor Dublé gave us, uh, which was essentially that essays don't necessarily need to be argumentative. Um, Not saying that you shouldn't make a point, but I thought it was very interesting that he said to us to think of our essays as illuminating a part of the text and how this illumination creates a lens that the reader can look at um, the rest of the work through. So that was kind of a different way for me to approach uh, this essay. I was still having great evidence. I was still making a point, but it took me away from having such an aggressive uh, standpoint as a writer to more um, of a passive, um, reflective role in trying to create uh, this illumination of something that I thought was very interesting and important. So actually, because of that, I became a lot more critical of the quotes that I was using and the points that I was making. So I went back and back and back uh, to my original drafts and I originally had about 30 quotes and that all probably could have worked, but I cut them down and I picked different ones and I was very um, meticulous about picking evidence that was really going to add to a clear understanding of what I saw and read um, in that passage. So um, I think that, yeah, my analysis was way better. And something else that I really got out of the writing process was the accordion method, which essentially is saying that, okay, you have a paragraph that's in 100 words. Now can you write it in 20 words? And now can you write it in 500 words? And I realized it's a lot easier to be um, very fluffy with your writing. And it really forced me to be very concise. Um, So through those exercises and constant revision and kind of a new outlook of approaching the essay, uh, I was able to take a topic that I was really passionate about and find a way to clearly demonstrate how it provides a better understanding of the text and our lives. Thank you so much, and I am honored to be a part of Scaffold this year.